uh, greetings brethren and uh, we are so glad to have been woken up this morning from the dead of the night uh, the lord is gracious unto us as a family and uh, this morning uh, we are still doing the series our higher calling and uh, today i'm privileged to be with my wife in the house so that uh, we may go through these promises together as a, a family and uh, i pray that uh, we will be blessed by the presentation of today and uh, the lord will guide us we are looking at a higher calling and uh, at this time we are looking at the, the promises of revelation the promises the revelations promises and uh, I like uh, us uh, to start uh, with a, a short word of prayer from my wife, then uh, we continue. Shall we pray? Father, we come unto you this morning. We thank you for the love, we thank you for the goodness. As we go through this time this morning, Lord, we pray even for those who are coaching or listening, that your presence, your Holy Spirit, will be with us all into our understanding. And above all, we pray for the forgiveness of sin that we remove all the doubts from our hearts. And the Lord, you may increase our faith even as we seek thee in prayers. In Jesus' name we pray the day. Amen. Thank you. And uh, and uh, let us look at the book of Revelation itself and uh, what uh, it is, the book of Revelation, and uh, what uh, it says. Revelation chapter 1. Uh, the, the book of Revelation has been uh, one of the, those books that uh, many will not like to read, many will not like to interact with it, but uh, when you look at the beginning of the book of Revelation itself, it has uh, uh, a threefold uh, blessings upon uh, those uh, that um, we look at it. And uh, I, I want you to read uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Verse 2 Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the Time is at hand. So there are three blessings decreed in the book of Revelation upon those who will handle it. The people say that the book of Revelation is a book of symbols, the book of, uh, it's like a botany when you read the book of Revelation, but there is a threefold blessing. Before we look at the promises, there are threefold blessings that have been decreed in the book of Revelation. Can you see them in the in verse three? Yes. One. Uh, those, who, uh, those who read. One is those who read, they'll be blessed. Number two, those who hear, those who hear they'll be blessed. And number three, those who keep, those who keep the things written there. And so there are three things that are in Revelation. So many times we miss these blessings because we have closed the book of Revelation and said this book is so difficult to understand. This book cannot be understood. It's it, When you read about it, it's just a beast. It is about mountains, it's about horns, and it's about all these things that are written. And uh, we miss the threefold blessings that are in the book. First of all, just by reading the book itself, the Lord says, you will be blessed. Reading itself, whether you understand it or you don't understand it, Blessed is the person who reads it. And so 
there is a blessing that people miss in the book of Revelation because they do not read it. And the second one is he who hears the words will be blessed. And the third one, those that keep uh, the, the, the things written therein. And so I, I, I want us to look at uh, the topic at the hand. And the topic at hand, it is... Uh, Revelation's promises. There are promises decreed in the book of Revelation, and I, I just want us to look at them because we are talking about a higher calling, and uh, the first three presentations uh, we went through prayer at large to set a foundation, and uh, yesterday we were looking at going beyond prayer, how we shall work, and uh, uh, now we want to go to these promises. If we will do the work, if we will guide others to do uh, uh, that which is written and um, that is which is in the Bible, what are the things that are written here? What are the promises that the Lord says he will be able to give unto us? What are these promises in the book of Revelation? Promises to Ephesus. Let us look at uh, the book uh, of Ephesus and, uh, and uh, the promises that are given to this church. And uh, before that, I want us to read uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says, 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, I will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. So the, the church of Ephesus, which is um, the first church that lived between 31 to 100 AD, uh, it was the church of apostles. During this time, the doctrines of Jesus were spread through the, the work of the apostles and Paul. Tragically, some people became tired of the pillars of truth and started preaching new ideas. They had left their first love and Christ rebuked them for this. And that is why we read uh, Revelation 2, 4, and 5, that they had left their first love. They had left their consistency on depending on God. And God tells them that... Uh, God signifies through the angel. Christ himself says that, uh, remember when thou hast fallen and repent. And if you don't do these things, I'll come and remove uh, thy candlestick except you repent. But that is not uh, how uh, the church of Ephesus uh, ends. There the, the is uh, a promise made unto this church of Ephesus. Uh, God doesn't just rebuke and leave you like that and leave you without anything. Uh, he goes ahead and uh, decrees a promise to this church. And in this church, there were those in Ephesus who were not caught up by strange new doctrines. They held steadfast to the truth of the three angels' message. And here, the promises were given unto them. Revelation 2.7, what is the promise that were given to Ephesus? Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yes, and so, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise of God. This is the promise to the church of Ephesus. No matter how we have fallen, if we come back to the truth and to the way, the Lord is promising that uh, he will let us eat of the tree of life. And so I'm speaking to anyone who has given up hope in life. I'm speaking to anyone who is struggling outside there and uh, doesn't seem to be overcoming. The Lord has promised to make you overcome and not only to overcome, but to eat of the tree of life. This is the promises of God. This is promise that is given to the church of Ephesus, and we can claim it by faith. It is God who gives us strength to be able to overcome these things in our life. And as he gives us the strength to overcome, he also gives us a promise that uh, he will never leave us alone. He will not forsake us. But even at the end of the time, 
he will give um, us to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. And uh, always it is to him that overcometh. It is to him that overcometh these promises. And why does he talk about overcoming? God cannot request us or Christ cannot request us to do something that is impossible to him. Look at the book of Hebrews. Look at the book of Hebrews. We are looking at... Uh, uh, We are looking at uh, number six in the series, Our Higher Calling, and it is Revelation Promises. Revelation Promises. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter five. Christ does not uh, tell us to do something that he can do, that he has not himself passed through, but something that he has passed through. Hebrews chapter five, reading on, from verse 7 to verse 9. Through the days of his flesh, when he had when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in, in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation and to hold them that obey him. Yes, so it is Christ who after overcoming, now he gives us his victory. His victory is a, a victory and he tells us, he that overcomes, will I give to eat of the tree of life. He overcame, that is why he is requesting us to overcome. He can't request us where he failed, and his victories are our victories. It's not for us to overcome per se in quotes, but it is for him, for us to allow him to be in our hearts, and then we shall be able to overcome in this life. Uh, in Galatians chapter 2, look at Galatians chapter 2. We are looking at the promises in Revelation, and we are looking at he who overcomes. The book of Galatians chapter 2, it is uh, verses, uh, verses 20, I presume. What does it say? For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I have, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, yeah, so I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ is the one who living in me. So uh, we are assured of this victory. Let none say that I cannot overcome because the Bible is full of the promises of God and uh, how he will uh, make us overcome. Uh, you look again at uh, Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 12 and verses 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Continued on to verse 16. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the Son of God, without rebuke, in the midst of the crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world, calling forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yes, so uh, he gives us how we can be overcomers, and he gives us this, do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke. And you find that the churches in Revelation have a rebuke because they have not um, followed the direction to do all things without murmuring and disputing. That is why they are having actually 
uh, uh, rebukes. And God says that if we do things without murmuring and disputing, we shall be blameless. And so uh, the promises in Revelation are for us to take. Uh, we are told that uh, through defects in the character, Satan wants to gain control of the whole mind. And he knows that if these defects are cherished, he will succeed. Therefore, he constantly, he is constantly seeking to deceive the followers of Christ with his fatal sophistry that it is impossible for them to overcome. But Jesus pleads in their behalf, uh, his wounded hands, his bruised body, and he declares to all who will follow him, my grace is sufficient for thee in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verses 29-30. Let none then regard their defects as incurable. God will give faith and grace to overcome them. So we have to depend on Christ, and he will give us grace to overcome them. To the church in uh, Smyrna or Smyrna, church under persecution, let us look at the promises. In this church, the church in Smyrna, uh, this is the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2, still, Revelation chapter 2. And uh, the church of Smyrna, from, it, it, it's from the church from uh, uh, 100 to 313 AD. This is the church from uh, 100 to 313 AD. And it was a church under fire, the Roman emperors Marcus Aurelius, who ruled between 161 to 180 Septimus Savas, 193 to 211, and Maxim Minas, the Thracian, 235 to 38, Valerian, 253 to 260, and Diocletian. This was the most cruelest emperor to ever live. 284 to 305, all persecuted the Christian in one way or another. It was the Edict of Milan, you remember it in, uh, by Constant, that put an end to uh, 10 years of violent persecution. Uh, of Christian. This is the Edict of Milan in uh, 325. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, that is ten years. Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee crown of life. Revelation 2.10. A wonderful promise was given to the persecuted church. The second death will have no power uh, over them. And uh, we, we just want to read this, Revelation 2.11. Go ahead and read it, Revelation 2.11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Yes, so a promise is given to this church that if they endure under this persecution, they will never face the second death. And uh, we talk of the persecution have take, that have taken place in the past. But uh, look at uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 1. If these people were able to endure, then we should have faith in the Lord that he will also give us the strength to endure. Look at uh, Revelation, chapter 12, verses 1. Okay. Yes. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Revel Sorry, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. Sorry. Book of Revelation and Daniel are like a hand in glove. You speak of another and you think you are speaking of the other. So, sorry, the, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verses 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. Yes. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Yes, so he, he, look here. You understand that uh, he says in Revelation 2.11 that he that hath had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcome shall not be hurt of the second death. And what does Revelation, uh, da, uh, the book of uh, Daniel chapter 12 says? It says that uh, everyone written in the book. Be yes, everyone written in the book shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found in the book, written in the book, shall be delivered. And so they will not suffer the second death. This is what we are told uh, 
there is a great trouble coming. These people endured persecution, but also in our time there shall be persecution. In our time there shall be persecution. But we are called to endure. We are called to endure even unto the end, and then we shall be delivered. We shall never suffer the second death. Look at um, uh, Great Controversy, page 622, paragraph 4. 622, paragraph 4. This is what it says. The time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us, and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess, and which many are too intolerant to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality, but this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. In that time of trial, every soul must stand for himself before God. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the land, as I live, said the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. And so, we find that we are being told to overcome. And uh, in order for us to overcome, in this time of persecution, we must cultivate faith now, a faith that can endure hunger. And uh, I think this should be here. Let me try to blow it on the screen. That uh, uh, this is... Uh, Let me see if I can't get this. Yes, Great Condrover 621. Try to magnify it. View zoom. Yes, this is it. And uh, I, I like you if you can read it, to read it. You able? It is fine. Yes, go ahead. The season of distress and anguish before us will require faith that can endure weariness, weariness, the delay and hunger, a faith that will not faint till severely tried. The period of probation is granted to all to prepare for the for that time. Jacob prevailed because he was uh, persevering and determined. His victory is an evidence of the power of imputinate prayer. All who will lay hold of God's promises as he did and be as honest and uh, persevering as he was will succeed as he succeeded. Those who are willing to deny self, those who are unwilling, those who are unwilling to, uh, to deny self, to agonize before God, to pray long and earnestly for his blessings will not obtain it. Wrestling with God, how few know what it is. How few have ever had their souls drawn out after God with intensity and of desire until every power is on the stretch. When waves of despair which no language can express sweep over the suppliant, how few cling with unyielding faith to the promises of God. Yes, GC 621, paragraph 2. And so, uh, in this um, uh, persecution that is coming uh, uh, upon us and uh, being called to endure and overcome and be not hurt by the second death, we need to have a preparation today and not a preparation tomorrow. All the preparation should be done today and not Tomorrow, and so we are looking at um, Revelation's promises under the series "Our Higher Calling." Under the series "Our Higher Calling," you will be afflicted by first death. Roman emperors will cut you down. They will try to make you as miserable as possible, but your life is as secure for eternity. Men may take the first life, but they cannot touch the second. A crown awaits you in the coming kingdom. Next, we go to the promise of Pagamos. Pagamos. Uh, and it is com compromises. Pagamos was the church of compromise. As we can see it, it compromised the truth that was once delivered 
to the sense. And we find uh, Laodicea still in the same category. These promises that we are reading applies to every church in every generation. These are conditions that are found in the churches. Pa Pagamos was a church between 313 to 538 AD. Uh, the man who best illustrates that is Balaam, but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Revelation 2.14 So successful were the antics of Balaam that 24,000 Israelites perished in Numbers chapter 25. During this time of bold-faced apostasy, there were, as in every age, the overcomers, and they were given some rich promises and read Revelation 2.17 and see the promise given to those who are in Pergamos. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Yes. Special fellowship, a deep spiritual experience will be given to Pergamos overcomers. The white stone represents the vindication in court room scene. In ancient Greece, jury members would cast a white stone to signify an acquittal, whereas a black stone proclaim the defendant guilty. And so the Lord is promising to make them eat of the hidden manna, and manna is food of food of angels, and uh, they will be given a white stone, which means acceptance and a new name written on it. Uh, anciently, the high priest had a mitre on his forehead, and what was written on him? Holiness to Jehovah. And so here, a new name shall be written unto us, a new name. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. Genesis 32, 27, and 28. Uh, the error that had led to Jacob's sin in obtaining the birthright by fraud was now clearly set before him. He had not trusted God's promises, but had sought by his own efforts to bring about which God would have accomplished in his own time and way. As an evidence that he had been forgiven, his name was changed from one that was a reminder of his sin, a deceiver, as a plunder, to one that was commemorated his victory. The name said, the angel shall be called no more Jacob, the supplanter, but Israel, for a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. And so, a new name is promised to overcomers. Those who will share the benefits of Savior's mediation should permit nothing to interfere with the duty to perfect holiness in fear of God. And what does it say next? The precious hours, instead of being given to pleasure, to display, or to gain seeking, should be devoted to what? An earnest, prayerful study of the word of truth. The subject of the sanctuary and the investigative judgment should be clearly understood by the people of God. All need a knowledge for themselves of the position and work of their word. Great high priest. Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith which is essential at this time or to occupy the position which God designed them to fill. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. Each has a case pending at the bow of God. Each must do what? Meet the great face to face. Uh, Thyatira, the church under the rise of the papacy, the church under the rise of papacy, that is Thyatira between 538 to 1517 AD. And uh, let us read Revelation 2 20 to 21. And I give her space to repent of her fornication, and if she repented not, behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her. Kill her children with death. All the all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth the reins and hearts. I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, unto the rest in the Thyatira, as many as 
have not this have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none of other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Yes. And the, the, the rise of purpose is clearly manifest with the church of Thyatira, and no other symbol could more fittingly represent the purple power than Jezebel. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idol. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Rome sought to turn people from Christ, and to send her on the Pope, a sinful, frail human being. This work of the purpose went on for centuries, from 538 AD down to the time of the reformers, was Jezebel allowed to go almost without protest. However, there were in this time the Waldenses, the Hughes, or the Huguenots, and Weekly. This remained pure in the midst of papal corruption, and the work of God went forward, and there were overcomers even in Thyatira. And uh, look at the, the people who resisted Jezebel and uh, were able to overcome. What is the promise? What is the promise given to these people in uh, Revelation 26, in Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 to 28? He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. So the overcomers are promised to be uh, rulers of nations. Rulers of nations. And uh, look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verses... Uh, Verses 5 and 6. Can you read Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6? And from Jesus Christ, who is faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us yes. and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and that made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so the Lord has made us what? Kings and prince unto kings. He has made us. Uh, he hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. And so He says that uh, I'll make you to rule over the earth. And uh, I also want you to look at the book of Matthew, chapter nineteen. Verses 28. Because we are told that um, he who overcomes uh, I'll, I'll give him power over nations. And God has made us priests and kings as he also is a priest and a king. And uh, Revelation chapter, this, this promise to the church of um, Thyatira, you know, Christ talked to his disciples something. Look at uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 19, is it verse 28? And you can start earlier than uh, 28, Matthew 19. And then answered Peter and said unto him, Yes. Behold, we have so forsaken all, and yes. follow thee. What shall we have therefore? Yes. What shall we have? Therefore. Therefore. In mm -hmm. verse 28, what does Jesus Christ tell him? Uh, in uh, verse 28 and, uh, mm -hmm. and 29. And Jesus said unto them, Verily yes. I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. So the, the apostles, remember, they were of the church of uh, Ephesus, is it? Yes, 
But uh, this is a promise to the church of uh, Thyatira. And so you find that um, these conditions of the churches is not limited per se to a certain period of time and even the promises, but um, they are um, they, they are universally uh, given to the churches. And uh, Christ promised the disciples that they shall sit on the 12 thr thrones uh, of the tribe of Israel judging the nations. And here in Thyatira, we are told that uh, God shall make us prince and kings unto himself. And so it is those who overcome. And then uh, we look at the church of uh, Sardis, the church of the Reformation. That is Sardis, the church of Reformation. This is uh, in the book of uh, uh, Revelation, uh, chapter 3, when it is starting. Uh, the church of Reformation and beyond started out so wonderfully. This is between 1517 to 1755 AD. Luther and righteousness by faith, sola scripture, the papacy as the Antichrist, and all these kindred doctrines. The truth spread like wildfire, but then people stopped studying, stopped leaning on the Lord, and trusted in their leaders. Big mistake, Sadis died. And uh, we are told that many think that um, Reformation ended with Luther. Many thought that Reformation ended with Luther. Let, let me just try to find it for you. Too bad. People have stopped reforming. They just see that um, reformation. It was like it has. It was ended with Luther, but um, reformation has to go on till the end of the world. Yes, here I have it. And uh, let me see if uh, I can put it on the screen then. Good. Here we go. Here we go. Can you see it? Yes, go ahead. The Reformation did not, as many suppose, end with Luther. It is to be continued in the close of this world in history. Luther had a great work to do in reflecting to others the light which God had permitted to shine upon him, yet he did not receive all the light which was to be given to the world. From that time to this, new light has been continually shining upon the scriptures, and new truths have been constantly unfolding. Great Controversy, page 148, paragraph 4. And so, Reformation did not end with the Church of Sardis. It has to be continued on until um, uh, the end. It has to be continued on until the, the, the end. Like every era, there were those in this time frame from 1517 to 1798 that were faithful and they received a wonderful promise. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in a white, in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, let us look at Revelation 3, 4, and 5. What is the promise of this church? Thou hast such few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Yes, yeah, so Christ promises to confess his the, the names of the overcomers before his father and before the angels. He, he says that he will confirm, he will confess the name of the overcomers before his father and before the uh, angels and before the angels. So this garment, what is this garment that he will be able to put on there? 
Look at uh, when talking about the white, the winding garment, Christ object lesson, page 311, 312. What is this garment? The robe of Christ's righteousness. By his perfect obedience, he has made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandments. When we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united with his heart. The will is mine in his will. The mind becomes one with his mind. The thoughts are brought into captivity to him. We live his life. This is what it means to be clothed with the garment of his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then as the Lord looks upon us, he sees not the flat, thick leaf garments, not the nakedness of and deformity of sin, but his own robe of righteousness, which is perfect obedience to the law of Jehovah. The guests at the marriage feast were inspected by the king. Only those who were accepted, who had obeyed his requirements and put on wedding garment. Uh, so it is with the guests at the gospel feast. All must pass the scrutiny of the great king and only those who are saved who have put on robe of Christ's righteousness. Christ tells us to overcome and put on the garment of righteousness. Submitting ourselves to Christ, heart united with his heart, merged with his will. Our mind, his mind becomes our mind. Our thoughts are brought into captivity to him. Uh, we live his life. This is what it means to be close with the Christ government. And Philadelphia. By the way, what can you say about Philadelphia? What about this church? We kept the truth. Something so important that a door was opened to them. They had a door open. A shut and an open door. This is the church that watched for the coming of Jesus Christ 1755-1844. This church watched Christ by faith enter the Holy of Holies. How fitting that they will hear of an open door which no man can shut. How wonderful that the promise to the overcomers in Philadelphia will be the honor of being a pillar in that heavenly temple. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I'll write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. I'll write upon him my new name. And uh, I want you to observe the language that is used upon Philadelphia. Language used upon Philadelphia. They are the pillars of the temple. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, what makes the house strong? The pillars are the ones that make the house stronger. They are the ones that make the house stronger. And so, what if you try to mess up with the pillar? The house comes down, the house falls. And so, the Church of Philadelphia, they entered into the most holy place and they became the pillar of the last church. Do you know that the last church is Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. The last church is not Laodicea. Laodicea is a condition of the people prevailing in the world in the end times. But the last church to be translated is which church? Mm -hmm. Philadelphia. And this church of Philadelphia, they were given pillars to make that church strong, is it? They were given uh, the sanctuary. The in three angels' messages, Sabbath, the law of God, and uh, the personality of God. These are the pillars that uh, held the church strong to be able to go, go through the crisis in the end time. These are the pillars that they, they, they were made pillars. And uh, they are told that every system of truth was open to them when they entered into the most holy place. And so, what has made the church become Laodicea? The moving or the breaking of the pillars has made the church to be Laodicea. And if we would like to move the church from Laodicea to Philadelphia, then the pillars have to be done what? The pillars have to be restored. Look at uh, the book of the division of Psalms 11, 3. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. Division of Psalms 11, 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yes, if the foundations are broken, what can the righteous do? And the righteous, what they can do is to restore those foundations or uh, it is to restore those foundations, to restore those broken pillars. They have to restore them. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for something in the book of Pro Proverbs. I'll soon tell you what it is. Uh, look at uh, Proverbs 22, 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Yes, remove not the remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. 23.10, yes. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Yes, so uh, I'll just uh, have to bookmark them in my Bible. Give me a moment. That is uh, from uh, Division of Psalms 11.3. Division of Psalms 11.3. What do we find? Help me with a pen. Yes, from uh, the Division of Psalms 11.3, we have Proverbs 22, 28, and 23.10. Thank you so much. And so, uh, we are being told that if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? For us to bring back the Philadelphia condition, because those who entered into this sanctuary were given... Um, the pillars to make the church strong what we have to do is to restore these pillars and then the church will be strong and it will be able to go through the last crisis and then uh, just uh, uh, look at uh, pp 197-198, the overcomer receives god's name which we find in revelation 14 1 having his father's name written in their foreheads from Revelation 7, we know this is to be the seal of God the Sabbath. The Philadelphian overcomers also receive a new name like those in Pergamos, a sign of conquest. As an evident that he had been forgiven, his name was changed from one that was a reminder of his sin to one that commemorated his victory. Thy name, said the angel, shall be called no more Jacob the supplanter, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast thou prevailed. Uh, I see we have been... Uh, quarreling and struggling too much we have to do away with these quarrelings we have to do away with these murmurings and blendings what we have just to do because philadelphia when it entered in the most holy place they were given the pillars which made the church strong to guide them through the end of the time instead of going around and doing many things which are negative what we have just to do as a people we have to agree and restore these pillars you know, we have been praying for the latter rain for so much. We have been praying for the Lord to do something to his church. But how, and uh, I have been studying this for some time now. In 1888, the loud cry had started, the latter rain, is it? It had started raining. But where did it stop? The pillars started to be removed. And the people rejected the righteousness by faith message. And so we, we have been looking and praying for this latter rain. And the only way it can come back is to look at these things that they were doing and make the latter rain start falling in the loud cry. And do them. And then from their own, God will guide us. Let us restore the pillars. Let us go in the doctrines that they were preaching at that time. And when we have done this, I can assure you by the word of God without a shadow of doubt, the latter rain will start falling. And you know what? He says that uh, 
how, how will the the reason why I say I'm sure of this if we restore the pillars and do what they were doing the later rain will start falling and I'm saying I'm sure of this because the prophet has said this is so look at um, uh, look at um, I want you to read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 1 and 2 as I just put something on the screen Deuteronomy 32 1 and 2 Give ear, O ye heavens. Yes. And I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Yes, so my doctrine is what is the rain. My doctrines are what is the rain? And uh, I'm talking about uh, bringing back the latter rain because it was falling, but it stopped. What shall bring the, the, the latter rain? And uh, I want to blow this back on the screen so that you may see it. I'm talking about the, the church has been struggling so much about praying so that the latter rain may fall. But we are finding that in the Philadelphian church, the latter rain and the loud cry had started in that church, and then it drifted into Laodicean condition, and for us to have that latter rain, we have just to restore the pillars, because they were given the pillars. The Philadelphian church is the one that has the pillars. If we restore them, then the latter rain will start, and I'm sure that is what will happen. How will the latter rain come? Can you read it? We must not wait. We must not wait for the latter rain. Yes. It is coming upon who will recognize and appropriate the dews and showers of grace that fall upon us. When we do what? When we gather the fragments of light. When we appreciate the sure masses of God who loves us, who loves us to have us trust him, then every promise will be fulfilled. The whole earth is to be filled with the glory of God. So when we gather the fragments... It is um, uh, when um, we are gathering the fragments, that is when the latter rain shall start falling. Which means that these fragments, it is things which have been buried in with the traditions of men. The pillars which have been removed. This is the gathering of the fragments. By bringing back the pillars which have been removed, then the latter rain will start falling uh, upon us. And so let us see the last church, which is Laodicea. Laodicea is rich in her own mind and is desperate, is in desperate need of Christ. She feels she has it all. The hospitals, the educational institutions, a world church. Tragically, since Laodicea leaves Christ out, her only hope, uh, Laodicea will fail. Some, though, will see their deep need of Jesus and will sit with him on his father's throne. And uh, I just want to look at something here. Look at this. I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen, and I was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony called forth by the council of the true witness to the Laodiceans. This will have its effect upon the heart of the receiver and will lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. Some will not bear this straight testimony. They will rise up, up against it, and this is what caused a shaking among God's people. Um, uh, Christian experience and teachings of E.G. White, page 176, paragraph 1. And so the straight testimony is what will bring people out of their Laodicean condition and bring them to a state where they can be overcomers. And uh, we concentrate so much, yes, on the condition of Laodicea, but only if also we could read the promise given to the church of Laodicea, Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am sat down with my father in his throne. So Laodicea is also promised if it goes back, to the condition that God will want it to go to, 
it will become part of Philadelphia. It will join with the Philadelphia and it will sit on the throne as even Christ uh, overcame and sat on the throne of his father. And so, brothers and sisters, uh, we are exhorted uh, to have, to partake of the divine nature. And then the promise is ours. Let us read this last send sentiment. And he came to make us partakers of the divine nature. As long as we are united to him by faith, sin has no more dominion over us. God reaches for the hand of faith in us to direct it to lay fast hold upon the divinity of Christ, that we may attain to perfection of character. And how is it accomplished? Christ has shown us. By that means, by what means did he overcome in the conflict with Satan? By the word of God. And Laodicea has drifted into much uh, traditions more than what is written. There is so much, uh, I think, th there is so much building on their own understanding instead of relying on God for their understanding. Only by the word of God could he resist temptation. It is written, he said, and unto us are given exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through last. Second Peter 1 4. Every promise in God's word is ours. By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God are we to live. When assailed by temptation, look not to circumstances or to the weakness of self, but to the power of the word. All its strength is yours. Thy word, said the psalmist, have I hid in my heart that I may not do it. Sin against thee by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of who? Of the destroyer. This is how only Laodicean is going to be kept from the destroyer. Christ object lays on page 312 to page 314. It is not enough for us to believe that Jesus is not an imposter and that the religion of the Bible is no cunningly devised fable. We may believe that the name of Jesus is the only name under heaven whereby man can be saved, and yet we may not, through faith, make him our personal savior. It is not enough to believe the theory of truth. It is not enough to make a profession of faith in Christ and have our names registered on the church road. He that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Hereby we do know that we know him if we do what? Keep his commandments, 1 John 3.24 and uh, 1 John 2.3. This is the genuine evidence of conversion. Whatever our profession, it amounts to nothing unless Christ is revealed in works of righteousness. The truth is to be planted in the heart. It is to control the mind and regulate the affections. The whole character must be stamped with the divine utterances. Every jot and tittle of the word of God is to be brought into the daily practice. He who becomes a partake of the divine nature will be in harmony with God's great standard of righteousness, his holy law. This is the rule by which God measures the actions of men. This will be the test of character in the judgment. So promises are given to these churches. And these churches have to overcome and lead others to overcome. As Christ even overcame and he's leading others to overcome. This is our duty in our higher calling to be overcomers and lead others to be overcomers. I want us to read two things, one on the screen and the other in the Bible, and uh, then we shall close. We go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. We read one thing there, and then we read Revelation and close up. Look at Revelation chapter 11, verses... Uh, Thirty-two to thirty-five. Yes. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be very corrupt by the flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall 
by the sword and by the flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be orphaned with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with batteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed so many will be tried many will fall but many will also lead others to righteousness the final promise to the overcomer in the book of revelation is found in revelation 21 7 he that overcometh shall do what inherit all things and i'll be his god and he shall be what my son, everything inherited by the overcomers in each era of the church will finally be realized by the redeemed and every promise made will be granted to the overcomers in every era. And so, uh, brethren, our work is not to doubt the word of God and what Christ can do in our life. Our work is trust fully in the Lord and see his victory becoming our victory and lead others to this victory also. We cannot present the message of God and his victory to the world if, if we ourselves who are presenting it, we are not overcomers, we are failures. And so it is only those who overcome. And uh, this is what you find in the book of Revelation. We are not going to read it. Revelation chapter 14. Before the three angels' messages are given, you notice one thing. What do you notice? There are people and they are sealed with them father's name in their forehead is it and uh, they are called angels they are called angels why are they called the angels because they have a message which needs a people who are purified like angels and it is after they have been sealed it is after they have become angels they are in that condition then the three angels messages are given and why are the three angels messages given so that to make the earth ripe to be harvested is it Yes, the three angels' messages are given so that the church may be made ripe to be uh, uh, harvested. And it is our work to make the harvest ready. It is our work to make the harvest ready. By the power and the grace that the Lord has given unto us, we have to make the harvest to be ready. And so my prayer today is, Lord, the harvest is ripe, but there are no reapers. Send forth what? The reapers. Humans cannot qualify the reapers. Humans can pray for the reapers to be qualified. That is our work. And how do we pray that the reapers may be qualified? By living that life. If we live that life, then we will, uh, we will lure, we will uh, compel others to live such a life. If the people are seeing us overcoming, they'll say, if so and so is overcoming, why is it that I cannot overcome? We shall... Uh, we shall be able to uh, affect other people's life if we are overcomers and the Lord will make uh, uh, the reapers of the field because we see that the, the, the harvest is ripe, the world is already ready for the end time events, but it is only the church which is not ready. So I pray that in this higher calling, we may be overcomers and uh, be able to embrace on others the heart of overcoming, be able to... Uh, uh, to move along the hearts of others so that they may believe in this overcoming and uh, we may uh, actually uh, affect their life in a positive way. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. We end with a word of prayer. You pray. Our Father, what in heaven, we are going again come before the princess. We thank you for the time that we have had to share the word. And we thank you for those who have been listening, those who have been watching for this. Lord, we pray that you may guide us as even we embark into the duties of the day. Lord, we pray for the guidance. We pray for the purification of our hearts, of our minds. Lord, we may be among those who we live to uh, be a light to the world, to men who are in darkness, by living up to the promises that you have given unto us, by looking unto the word of the promise that, Lord, we may be faithful unto the end, and that we may seek to overcome as you did overcome, and give us an example to follow. Be with us this day, for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.